I'm Riley. And I'm Emily. We're so glad to have you back again for another YouTube episode. We are about to dive into hits and misses. Part two. Part two. I forgot. <laughs> it was a fun one. And we have so many more to share. So I think it's just fitting. We, we you know, we'll do part two, three, four, whatever we get to. <laughs> it's a matter of just like remembering back, right? <laughs> Scrolling yeah. through like our own personal archives going, when did we fuck up? <laughs> yeah. I love it. Because we definitely do. So make sure, first of all, you join the Patreon, guys. The link is below. You got to join us over there to see all of the exclusive extra spicy episodes that we can't put here on YouTube. It, it, it's got winning episodes. And you could probably binge now because we've got, what, like 10 episodes over there that are exclusive? Um, yeah. Head on over to Patreon. Follow us in all of our uh, social media. The links are below as well. And a quick introduction. We are the owners of a really gorgeous top-end, high-end, happy ending exotic massage parlor in Toronto, Canada. And we have this podcast to talk about all the things, life behind the scenes, business owners, the industry, sex stuff, relationship stuff, men, women, everybody in between. So I think Hits and Misses Part 2 is going to be hilarious because our highs are high and our lows are low. <laughs> And you know what? I said I said we were gonna leave this one for the end, but let's start with this miss because it literally just happened. Um today's recording day. So we we usually sit down and try to record a couple episodes and we just wrapped one up that was for was that one for Patreon? No, it was for YouTube. YouTube. So you guys yeah. will see it one day. But we completed the episode and realized we were not recording. <laughs> And it's so disappointing. Like, you know, we put in the the effort to get it done, have our notes made, and it's gone. So we will re-record and you'll see that one soon. But yeah, there was a miss today. We just gotta chalk it up to what I guess you would call podcaster life because yeah. it seems to be a thing that happens to everybody. I'm sure it will happen again, but it was quite the giggle. <laughs> I love it. So start us off with some hits, right? Okay. Um, I think our first hit has to go to our newest session, the centerfold. Um, we have talked to you guys about it on a previous episode, so we won't go into the backstory again, but guys, it's a hit. Like it's a win. The girls are loving it. The clients are loving it. There is several sessions per day. I think this will, although it's be, it started as a feature session, I I'm absolutely sure it will become part of the permanent menu. And I'm so proud of us because since the Muse Mixer, like we we haven't had like a new creation like this in a while. So it's been I awesome. I totally agree. I agree. The clients are raving about it. Um, I'm on Twitter a little more than you, so I see a lot more of the tweets, but they're absolutely yeah. loving it. The girls are loving it. They are. They and are. I think we're at about two dozen have, have happened and we're only, we're at Valentine's today when we're recording. So we're halfway through the month. And that's fantastic for a brand new session and a brand new feature launch. So I love yay. it. Yay. One of these. <laughs> Sometimes we strike gold. We do. You know, we do, we need a sound effect for when we fail. We need like a wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to those. And on that note, I'm going to hop over to what I consider a huge myth slash fail. I think it goes in both categories because... We are, what, two weeks away from starting our second phase of our renovation. Yep. Of course, anytime we talk about it, the memories come flooding back of the nightmare of renovating. Anyone who's ever owned a home or a business that's renovated knows that it's just, it's stressful, it's hectic, it costs more than you think, it takes longer than you think, and there's always going to be hiccups. But there was one in particular, <laughs> I'm about to throw our staff right under the bus. Because they, they actually caused this fail. So it was our third renovation. So Muse 3.0. We started with one, three rooms. We expanded to five rooms with the second one. And then we did a full makeover for the third one. And we had a really awesome designer and contractor. He was young. He was funky. He was very Yorkville to me. He was downtown finance stylish, very high end. And, and actually the design of our showers in terms of the layout and stuff was designed by him. The layout of much of our staff room was designed by him. And of course the girls took quite the fancy with him because he was a rather handsome fella. Um, yeah. and 
despite us saying, do not mix business and pleasure, they all disagreed <laughs> and decided to all go out clubbing on the weekend together. I'd say about two thirds, maybe halfway through that renovation. And I still don't know what was said, but I know that Monday morning, he literally called us in for a meeting in person and he quit because apparently all weekend long over drinks, the girls thought this is a great time to tell somebody all of the horror stories, all of the worst case scenarios, all of the, you know, the worst that could happen in this and the worst that could happen in that. And by the end of the weekend, he was like, I can have no part of this. And he oh. literally picked up, ripped up the contract and walked out the fucking door. And we were left dumbfounded without a head contractor, servicemen scheduled. He cut like all the, the resources, the references, the tile guy, the plumbers that he worked with. We just scramble and find everybody new and kind of try to pick up where we left off delayed the renovation by weeks it was an absolute nightmare and we were like ladies what the hell <laughs> it was terrible and i mean i think note to self don't hire a really handsome contractor actually i take that oh. back because all the girls are smitten with my brother and he's our current contractor <laughs> but um yeah it, it was a disaster like how, how could this be possible that our own staff current staff sabotages yeah. us we're used to it from previous staff or or other owners but our in-house staff is I mean there there are some stories guys let's be honest there's some there's some tough days working in a massage parlor so 100%. for that to be the topic of conversation um on an evening out with this guy enough so to make him not want to work for us right it was mind-blowing I know like there wasn't 18 million other things to talk about y'all had to go there and just bombard this stranger with all this information. I know. Oh, we were so mad. So that was an epic fail. A Definitely a miss. Second that um, one off the list. Hit. <laughs> the Muse Militia, one of my favorite like slogans, names. I love it. Um, <laughs> a few years back, we printed a bunch of stickers, like just simple our Muse logo stickers, and we enlisted clients. To, and you'll have to help me with this story. Did we have like a promo attached to it or was it just pick up stickers and spread them where you can? It was a promo. And I okay. I don't remember if it was like a series of like prize winners for second, third or something like that. But yeah. It was based on creativity. Okay. And taking a picture of it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it was all over the city. You'd find Muse stickers. Like it would be grocery stores, <laughs> Home Depots, downtown signs, stop signs. And and we'd see them ourselves. Like the clients went out there and worked, and they were you know tweeting their work and and wanting to get compensated or, or participate in the promo. But the Muse Militia took over in the city of Toronto, and our sticker is I swear it's still out there. It's still out there. I see it on parking meters, random. I see it in Home Depot parking lots. I see it all over the place. And always there's few at the airport that somehow the cleaners always miss. <laughs> I was part of that brigade too. <laughs> I just I thought it was so clever and so much fun and I remember we gave out we ended up giving out way more prizes than we intended to because the boys were so creative and so smart um and we even opened a category for uh, a digital category because photoshopping was not an easy thing to do back then and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna send our editor the pic so she can show it right now because my favorite one was when someone put our logo on top of the sky dome and I was oh, like right. Yo, one day when we have a lot of money to piss away, I'm gonna get that done. Mark my words, that M will ride on that ceiling. <laughs> it was just spectacular. <laughs> and then the sports things went from there. I remember um one being like the Raptors like uh, court and our logo was center, yep. center court. There was another one that was the old Sam, the record man sign from uh, yeah. the infamous record shop here in Toronto. And they, they swiped out the records and put up anywhere. There's a circle. We can fit it. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it, was it wasn't super fun promo. It wasn't genius in the sense. It wasn't free marketing. We, there was a promotion. Right. So we compensated them somehow, but it's the legwork. Like mm -hmm. how else would we have completed that task of maneuvering around the city? So it, it was genius in that sense. Great. It was so genius. And I remember it was your idea. So kudos to Riley on that one. You get another horn. Thanks. <laughs> I love it.
All mm -hmm. right, I've got another myth to jump into. Okay. This one stems from when we used to go do events down at Oasis Aqua Lounge, which is a swingers club here in Toronto. And we would come as hostesses for the nights that they would allow single men to come. So there's still couples as well, but like single dudes were allowed to come in and check out the club and hang out. And the rules were that you're allowed to stay on the main floor, which is kind of the party zone, the open bar, the pool dance floor that kind of vibe but if you want to go up to like upstairs to any of the play areas you have to be escorted with a girl you can't just wander there as a dude up and just creep um poor guys <laughs> they, they, they need a chaperone they need someone to go with them and our girls were awesome about taking them upstairs showing them around maybe staying around to like watch some of the fun that was happening and as the drinks got flowing the girls ended up in the dungeon which it's kind of like an adult playground in a literal sense because there's things to climb and things to swing on and <laughs> things to just attach and detach and try and just mount all over the place. And uh, we ended up having a big problem with a customer who A, snuck up there without a chaperone and B, decided to take advantage of a girl that was tied up to a St. Andrew's cross, which is basically, do I have two pens? A big wooden structure that looks like this. And so your hands get tied at the top, your feet get tied at the bottom. Supposed to be lots of fun with consent. But this guy took it upon himself to march upstairs and go up and start groping this girl. And of course, security was livid. We were livid. He was actually a customer of ours. So it was embarrassing for us. The girl was upset at first she was pretty cool like she knows the client she was like it's fine I just wish it didn't happen kind of vibe so luckily she wasn't like totally upset about it because it really was a violation of her consent and we ended up having to kick this guy out of the club which is shitty we're there just we're just there to promote our spa <laughs> yeah. we just want to meet the oasis peeps and have the peeps meet our girls and and make friends and amends and, and business deals and all the things and instead here we are having to like bounce a guy out of the fun club because yeah. he just couldn't control himself and uh I think that was about the end when girls wanted to participate in those events so it definitely was one bad apple that ruined it for the bunch definitely a miss and a fail still pissing me off to this day mostly but. for him but yeah aftermath right? what the fuck okay on to the next hit um, I'd have to say one of our biggest hits has always been our parties. You guys have heard about them. We've talked about them on so many episodes. We have parties for <laughs> most occasions, really. But our biggest and our best is always for our birthday. Um, it's the only day that we give out completely free door fees. And it's always a hit. The turnout is great. We have all the staff on. Um, we're limited to 30-minute sessions generally just to you know accommodate volume. Mm -hmm. but it's the one day a year that we give back to the clients and say, thank you for supporting us for 14, 13, whatever the, the birthday number is, but it's always ahead for everyone involved. It's so fun. It's uh, it goes against the grain because the rub and tug isn't usually a social like venue, but one of my favorite parts is the clients that recognize each other from year after year. They may not even know who they are or they might follow each other on Twitter. Cause we've got a huge client following on Twitter, but they're just like, Bob, how are you? God, I've seen you since the last one. And they just yuck it up in the lobby or like up and down the hallway. We have games and all kinds of things. And they just socialize and feel comfortable. The girls just end up the sweetest hostesses flirting with the boys, keeping everyone kind of like engaged in some flirty banter in between their sessions. And gosh, it's the hardest working day for our managers. They yes. hustle hard on that day. They want to make sure everyone gets in, that everyone gets you know, the girl that they want. They, we just want everyone to be happy that day. It's such a celebratory moment. And like you said, it's our customer appreciation party. We get to thank everyone for participating, but it makes friends amongst girls that maybe don't work shifts together. It makes the managers maybe meet clients that they don't normally see because they work different shifts. It, it means two managers are working together. So they get to hang out a bit. We, we feed people, we supply the coffee. We can't supply the booze, unfortunately. Otherwise- We'd be throwing uh -huh. rage. <laughs> know, right? We would stay a lot longer. We would definitely stay a lot longer if there was wine. Um, but it's just such a joyful time. It, it brings like emotions and feelings to my heart every year when we do it. And I think the clients, most of all, absolutely love it. But the girls rave about it too. They're like, we should do this all the time. And I'm like, no, we shouldn't. We'll see you next year. 
<laughs> I just remember one year we had bowling. Most of it, if you've been to Mute, you know it's a really long hallway. Um, and we had bowling down the hallway. That was so much fun. We should do that again. We've done bowling. We did a pin the penis on the man. Because I remember Bella brought a penis poster. <laughs> to figure out, like pin the tail on the donkey. We did mini putt down the hallway. Uh, we did a raffle one year where you walk the whole that. hallway and have all the little jars to submit yep. your like kind of silent auction gotcha, yeah. MO, but like with different prizes and not just Muse prizes. We had iPads. We had all kinds of sh cool shit we were giving away. It was yeah. awesome because we have other companies that donate prizes to us too. So all like all the things come together for the anniversary parties. It's so sweet and yes. uh, definitely one of my favorite things. But that leads right into our next fail. And to me, it's a heartbreaker, this one. <laughs> because we thought we'd come up with the best idea ever. Um, so our 15-year anniversary is coming up. And this was many months ago now. We were really thinking ahead and thought we really wanted to do something huge. And as much as we love to give back to the clients, We've never really done something to celebrate the company with just the girls. And so we came up with this whole idea to basically take the entire team on a trip. And this, again, this was a Riley inspired idea that just kind of snowballed into this huge epic thought process. So we live in an era of everything from like startup campaigns to go fund me premises to wish tender where you can have multiple donors funding different gifts uh, for different sex workers we've got all these different kind of crowdfunding type options you can make money on social media you make money on only fans and it's your customers your clients your fan base anyone and everyone that loves you kind of contributes to a mission and so we thought it would be really cool to include some of the social media aspect of vlogging this whole experience combined with our customers to take Muse to Mykonos. We were going to go to Greece with the whole fucking team. We were going to try to do up the big yachts and the, and the fancy hotels and just kind of live large and hopefully get our customers involved, have little donation like um, increments and different like checkpoints where they get bonus custom video footage and messages from the girls each day, like specifically done just for them with that kind of cameo type vibe. And, and like we had so many layers to it. There was going to be content. There was going to be opportunities for the girls to make money on obviously their content and like so on and so forth. We were just going to like, crowd the whole plot and the whole plan with everybody contributing and everybody enjoying the trip and when we told all the staff about it they were furious they didn't just hate it they were upset by it yes <laughs> so much so they were like my ears were bleeding for days after that because the shit they were talking about us the shit they were talking about the idea we were on cloud nine thinking this is the most incredible thing because like what if it was the hooters girls or the coors light girls or the god ass girls or a bunch of only fans girls clients would love it people would participate it would be amazing and our staff I want to say poo pooed the whole thing, but that's way too <laughs> elegant. They shit all over the idea. <laughs> all over it. I cried. I was so upset. It, it, like how we kind of found the reality and, and came about some of the information and things being said was just devastating. And I still haven't been to Greece. <laughs> I know for the next few months leading up to June, I'm going to think about it often. My suitcases, I which I can see from where I'm sitting, are a little salty about it. I think they wanted to go to Greece too. And Muse in Mykonos just sounds so perfect. It would have been the most epic celebration. We could have even taken it further and raffled off a chance for some customers to join us. Or like we could have gone even bigger with the idea based on everybody's comfort level, right? And uh, we definitely have some girls that are more open on social media. They could have been more comfy doing face forward an interview live with everybody while we're on the beach or on a boat or seeing what we're eating every dinner. And we're all just like a bunch of hotties together. Like there could have been so much content and so much team building, such an amazing, like once in a lifetime experience. Yeah. 
and uh, a, a hefty price point that we would have paid for it too. And, and just have contributors and everyone kind of come together, all of our fans and our customers kind of adding to the fund and, and making it just an incredible experience for all. And um, yeah. <laughs> it, it was, fun, you know what, it's, it's a tough one because it's fresh still. It's our, probably our most recent miss. And we were <laughs> so excited about it. And like you said, most companies like God ask girls course, like they would do this and they'd be all for it. I, yeah. and I feel bad only in the context of most of these girls are still on our staff, but honestly, like <laughs> they just didn't see it the way we did. So we had to accept and move on. And the idea yeah. was crushed. Our hearts were crushed and our hearts you know, were so crushed. <laughs> they were crushed, but we moved on and here we are, you know, another day. Definitely. It's definitely one for the box. Now one for episodes. <laughs> now for the podcast. It's a miss part two. Yeah. But well, gosh, I cried. <laughs> I know you did. I know you did. Um, my last one I have is a bit of both. So it's a hit and it's kind of a miss. Again, kind of shitting on our staff. We <laughs> love these girls, but we're really like giving it to them today. So one of our most successful promos, um, I don't remember how long ago this was, but it was any session mm. you could bonus 10 minutes. I believe it was any session. So you pay for a 30, so. you get a 40. I think it was about 10 years ago. Okay. And it was something like that. Like you pay for, like you said, 30, you get a 40. If you pay for a 60, you get 70 minutes. And and something normally like most of our promos, have, as we've explained before, we, we only sell time. So there's only so many creative ways to do that. Um, mm -hmm. And in this case, it did affect the girls, but it also brought in so much more traffic if you looked at it the right way. Um, so we thought it was a great idea. Um, it was extremely successful. So we're giving away 10 of our minutes, as are they. Um, but, you know, this is an extra 10 minutes to build a regular, um, to mm -hmm. secure a future business. Like, there's so many positives. But after that, the girls ixnade the promo. No one would participate. We've never been able to rerun it. It was a <laughs> mess. <laughs> I do remember, I think we limited it, actually, now that I'm hearing you say it again. I don't think we offered it on 30 minutes. I think it was 45 and 60. Okay. And the premise was that that would take a 30-minute client, and he'd now want to try a 45-minute session but get 55 minutes, which is almost an hour, and that's a fabulous deal. And it definitely made girls more money because they're already booking longer sessions. It was hugely pop popular from a value standpoint from the customers. We had tons of new business, tons of returning business. The clients loved it. The girls were like, holy shit, it's busy, like more so than normal. And then I remember, I think it was just before the pandemic, we brought it up. It's like, you know, there was this one promo that we did years ago that was like wildly successful. We'd love to run it again. And I mean, our team was completely different in this era and they were like, absolutely no. Our current team of staff, like absolutely revolted. They were like, absolutely not. That's bullshit. I'm not giving 10 minutes of my time. This is crazy. They didn't even want to hear like the sales perspective, the revenue increase for each and every session, et cetera, et cetera. And they just said, hell no. So we can always try to bring it up again, <laughs> but it goes down as history as our absolutely most successful monthly promo that we've ever run. And we had run it a few times back then. It wasn't just a one-off, but so far, no go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, I think it kind of wraps up our part two of hits and misses. I mean, there'll certainly be more, but that was an interesting one. It's a fun little memory lane. It lets us laugh at ourselves. It also mm -hmm. lets us toot our horn when we do fabulous shit. <laughs> And you know what? It always sparks conversation with us. It sparks conversation with our staff, as well as the viewers, listeners, and customers. And we come up with new ideas from those conversations. So I love that, you know, one idea sparks three more and something may come with this. You never know. And we'll keep crying over Mykonos. Oh, if any clients want to fly to Mykonos, <laughs> the bosses need a we'll break. <laughs> we'll fully go. <laughs> I could use a yacht in my life and great. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining us in another fun episode. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as we did. I got the giggles now. <laughs> join us on the Patreon. You can find the link below. Make sure you subscribe over there and join the channel because you get access to all of our extra spicy, extra saucy, not made for YouTube videos. 
Um, follow us on social media. You'll find those links in the caption as well. And we will see you next time on Muse on Mike. Bye. Bye. Bye.